Welcome to another episode of A Migrant's Journey. Uh, I know it's a Sunday, uh, but this is a special episode. That's the reason I put it up uh, on an odd timing. You know, I, I even said it's 4 p.m., but it didn't really matter what time I went live, as long as we went live. That was the intention. So thank you for, so much for your, all your support so far. We have had, uh, I think this is the 22nd episode. Uh, we have had 21 amazing episodes 21 amazing stories and there are a lot of hidden advice hidden golden advice in there so i highly recommend for you, uh, you to all, all to take a look at that uh, just a reminder to whoever is watching this for the first time uh, this is a series where we document uh, migrant stories uh, especially the initial struggles you know uh, when you decide to migrate uh, from whichever country to whichever country you uh, decide to migrate to um, we always see it as a dream come true and we think that you know the journey will be really easy but often it is not the struggles are very much real and uh, no one talks about the struggles they just talk hey i got a job i'm, I'm settled here and i'm having fun so this is a series to show what happens out there so if you're watching this live uh, again please uh, if you're watching this live leave a comment uh, make some noise say hi hello good afternoon good good morning good evening if, or, or if, even if you're watching this as a replay please leave a comment the more noise you make the more people uh, that uh, gets to see this and the happier it makes me also do subscribe to my channel uh, again uh, I keep repeating this but I pull some stats out of my YouTube channel and I, it looks like 80% of my viewers are not subscribers so please hit that subscriber button and make me a bit more happier so uh, coming back to what's special about today uh, what, the special thing is uh, um, I'm, I'm doing a real one-on-one -on -one, uh, interview rather than a virtual interview that we have been doing so far so i had to tweak the setup i had to adjust everything and that's the reason i thought i'll do it on a sunday rather than uh breaking uh, all the rhythm on a week weekday where i have to rush through it so uh, that's where uh, uh that's why i'm doing it today uh, so let me get straight into who the guest is and there you go that's the guest uh by by the way before you getting surprised or not i didn't invite anita to this house she's my wife uh, we live together that's the reason we are together here so welcome anita to the show um thank you vinesh it sounds very odd saying that yes um, <laughs> hi everyone i am anita and as some of you might know i'm Vinesh's wife and i work in the capacity of a senior quality analyst uh, with one of the design firms in melbourne i'm also um a student of MBA. I'm doing my master's in business administration from Melbourne Business School. So I'm so glad to be here. Generally, I am behind the curtain or rather outside the door. Today, I'm so, uh, so glad to be here talking to you all. It's weird to have an opportunity questioning your wife, but uh, I think that's <laughs> what we are going to do today. Uh, so uh, let's get straight into things. I mean, uh, I know I've talked about uh, uh, you in a lot of other sessions just over here and there. So let, let's get, I, I, you kind of introduced yourself already, but who are you? What do you do? And uh, what's your background? So uh, my background is um, in automation testing. So my designation, job designation as a senior quality analyst, I work for one of the biggest um, retail uh, merchants in Australia. And uh, yeah, um, I'm also pursuing my MBA from Melbourne Business School. So I like to specify that as my identity rather than my occupation. Um, so yes, that's what I do. All right. I think we had some issues in going live on uh, on YouTube, but uh, that's all right. I'll manage that later on. Uh, so um, let's let's go uh, straight to the beginning. Um, um, I know I say I tell share the story a lot, but before we arrived in Melbourne or before we decided to migrate in, uh, to Australia, what what preparation did you do? You know, specifically what preparation in terms of job search or what was the preparation you did before arriving to Australia? Yeah, um, so my story is a bit of repeat of Vinesh because we've been together um, it, through all the ups and downs. So we were settled in Bangalore um, uh, before we made the decision to move to Australia. And we had very good careers there. We were happy with our respective careers, but we had this feeling that something was missing or we could explore more um, than just being settled in our job. And yeah, uh, so basically that was the intention um, for making this move abroad to an unknown country, an unknown land. Um, so I was an automation tester and I knew that Australia had a lot of uh, testing opportunities and testers ha have this, um, um, I wouldn't call it an advantage, but yeah, something similar. Um, 
you are kind of agnostic to the sector that you're working in automation testing the technology kind of remains same no matter what industry you work in like finance or retail or um healthcare whichever it is um so the preparation that we did was um of course googling like when i say we we i did a lot of that and uh we also since we did not have any contacts in australia we also approached a career coach who gave us um a lot of insights into how the industry works here how different it is to um how things work in india so yeah we did we did some some sessions with that career coach um other than that one thing specific to my career was um i knew that certifications had a lot of um value in australia or at least that was what i heard and i did my istqb certification before moving in because it was i think it was a little cheaper in india too and we did not want to do that uh, studies after coming here so that was one thing i did um and um a lot of career coaching basically how to approach interviews and how to um how to um prepare your resume according to australian standards um yeah um a few things like that so uh, what exactly did the career coach do for you i mean i, I understand uh, um you already mentioned linkedin and resume so uh, what sort of training uh, did the career coach i mean this all happened before we arrived in yeah, australia yeah. as well so what sort of training or what sort of coaching did uh, the career coach provide um so back in india when you attend an interview you just brush up your technical skills and um mostly that's it mostly that's a preparation that you do um but the career coach um the most valuable thing out of that was he introduced us to the star method of um attending interviews which is like situation then you analyze what you did there what was the remedy that you uh, maybe that's not the expansion of star but yeah basic Result. Result. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. He knows it better. Um, so yeah, uh, I think that that was a major value. At looking back, it just did not apply for um, our new life in Australia, like the interviews that we attended here. It, it is a um, it's a very valuable resource for anything, like throughout your life, whichever interview, whichever um, not even not just even job interviews. I think that has helped me even with my MBA um, applications and um, situations there. So that was one of the uh, major things. And um, yeah, yeah, I think. Yeah. So um, okay. So I think now we were all ready for migration. Uh, we moved in January twenty eighteen. Was it? Yeah, I think mid January twenty eighteen. Yeah, yeah. So um, how was your first couple of weeks like? I uh, know in terms of. exploring the country or uh, we'll get into the job search part later but in terms yeah. of exploring the country um so we knew nothing about australia other than what we knew from internet and probably a couple of acquaintances we did not know anything um so looking back it's such a they were such big risk takers i mean i'm i'm so proud to say that but yeah i'm not sure if we would do that again um so we moved we chose melbourne apparently for no reason somebody said sydney wasn't that great and it's crowded and we were coming from bangalore and we didn't want to go to no, another crowded city um for silly reasons like that we chose melbourne and the career coach was based in melbourne so that was a bit of connection um we moved to melbourne we did not have any job we had some savings um whatever we had uh, back in india which we converted to aussie dollars um Uh, we were living in the city when we moved uh, we had rented an apartment for a month or so like for the initial um, settling part uh we had to figure out the transportation we had to figure out how to do grocery shopping we had to figure out everything from scratch um but i'm so glad that um, we decided to move together initially before moving in we had this discussion okay you make the move first and then you settle down then i'll join you because we need that security of money and job like the the things that we hold on to we tend to hold on to in life uh but i'm so glad that we decided to um, take the jump together we moved together and we had each other for exploring everything it was a new life that we were making together exploring together it was also a bonding experience i would say um so yeah i ha- highly recommend moving in with your partner if you have that financial stability so yes we had to figure out everything from the scratch and uh, spending money was a um most of you might relate to this spending money was a big deal as in you go buy um, a mikey like 3 dollar 50 and you would immediately convert like for a kilometer of journey you're spending 200 300 indian rupees and um he yeah so small things like that but we did enjoy it uh, but my exploration part did not last very long probably vinesh will put that as another question so yeah, yeah. 
so I think uh, that's a really important point. You know, uh, I see a lot of people uh, traveling alone. You know, uh, either just the husband or just uh, I mean, because they have uh, they have a partner and kids, it's it's particularly hard for them. But uh, make no more. It it's hard. You know, even if you come here alone, it's really yeah, hard yeah. to. Uh, survive without a uh, without a partner uh, especially if you're stuck now right now uh, you know you can't travel back i mean you they can't travel b- uh, down here during this pandemic situation so um if at all you can i'd highly recommend to move together rather than moving one by one which which takes a, a huge mental toll on you so um your job search journey didn't last for long so we'll probably keep it short <laughs> uh, but uh and this is one of the good stories that I share. So, yeah, I'll let you explain. How was your job search journey over here? Um, it was very short. Um, so we moved in. I was uh, so I came with this dream that I wouldn't find a job. I wanted to do a part time job. I wanted to be a barrister. I had all these crazy like things built up in my head that Vinesh would find a job and he would be the breadwinner. I I would be sitting at home. You know the the uh, weird stuff. So. Um, but uh, I had done all my resume preparation. I don't think LinkedIn was, um, we did not give LinkedIn much of a priority. Uh, we had done the star method of interviewing, a few behavioral interview tips. Um, I came here, the career coach connected me to a few people on LinkedIn. Um, and uh, a few of them, I had contacted a few of them through messaging. Um, I was not gutsy enough to pick the phone and call somebody. Um, so yeah, I, I wasn't there yet. Um, one of the one of the um, recruiter, she approached me on LinkedIn. Hey, um, your resume seems like you know you're fit for automation testing. I would like to give you a call. I was really nervous, um, but I agreed that okay, let's have a chat over the phone. And she was such a nice lady. Um, so we had a really good chat, and she did not make me feel like I was a job seeker or she was um, she was a recruiter. She she was on the you know the higher platform but we had a we um, i remember vinesh specifically saying after the call why were you laughing out so hard like you know you're on call with a recruiter you had to be polite and okay ma'am okay sir kind of thing but that did not happen and i was really surprised with that call and then a few days later she contacted me again saying okay her client likes my profile she put forward my um, resume to them and yes um and there i had the first interview within two weeks of landing in australia And I went there, um, that is one interview, I think it was from a senior, I don't know, director, manager, um, um, so um, two or three people and I had my interview. And then before I even took the tram and reached back to our accommodation, I got a call from her saying, hey, Anita, so they liked your profile. Are you open to join tomorrow? And (laughs) I, I thought it was a hawk's call, seriously, I thought it was Frank, but then yeah, that was it. It just happened like that. And um, I joined the very next day. So, yeah, this is one of the good stories that I share, you know, two weeks, get a job and that's yeah, done. Yeah. So uh, that was quite short, but I thought, you know, I'll add a few more points to this rather than just job search, which I've been focusing on, on in all those episodes, uh, all these episodes. Um, so in how was the experience in your first role? Uh, it, it was a completely different environment, a completely different thing that you went to, and it was a contract job as well. So what yeah. was the experience with your first yeah. role over here? Um, so I was not familiar. It was a contract role, as Manish said. I wasn't familiar with what a contract role entails because um, I don't think in India it is a popular, um, it's a popular thing. Um, yeah, so I was hired by the consultancy, but I was working for... Um, one of the major telecommunication giants in Australia. Um, the role was that um, I had to set up this automation framework for one of the one of the biggest softwares, and um, it was a little haphazard to be frank. Um, to be working as a contractor, they don't. Um, so I had been working for product companies throughout my career in India and they invest a lot in you like they put you through a training they make sure that you're well looked after and a, a lot of yeah a lot of resources go into making sure that you you like you get at least a couple of weeks before you are put into full capacity of working but contract job right from the day one you are expected to deliver that was a little tricky for me but um yeah, but um, I wouldn't say it was a uh, it was a negative thing. It was a new way of working. I had to just get used to it. Um, 
yeah so the fickleness of a contract job was something that did not sit well with me especially after a few months um the telecommunication industry was going through a major upheaval and there was a lot of um, letting goes and um, changing contractors and things like that so um i um a contract does pay very well but um i wanted the stability of a job especially because i was doing my studies on the side um yeah but my first job was um i i would say that it was a blessing that it came in two weeks and that gave us a lot of stability to settle down in australia get our first house like rent our first house and things like that um but yeah uh, i would suggest that if you are new to australian job market look up a bit more on contract jobs and how they work and what it entails um yeah that was some homework that i had not done so uh, the point being that uh, don't, don't just focus yourself on getting the first job uh, even after getting a first job you can struggle uh, and and don't just go for that any job you know don't yeah. don't be thankful yeah. that you got any yeah. job because the journey can still be hard and that's uh, that's uh, key over here yeah and so, uh, you managed to get into mba uh, in between that and mind you i was still job searching over here <laughs> uh, so uh, at at what point did you uh, think about getting into mba and how did it happen did you plan for it or did it just happen yeah yeah um one of the reason of moving abroad was to pursue my higher studies i always wanted to do an mba and i wanted to do it from a very like a good school us was one of the option but um it wasn't an option leaving him back in india and then coming here um so i mean um there was us was not a good option for migrating like blindly how you migrate to australia taking a pr so australia australia had a very good school which is melbourne business school which i had researched before coming here and uh, i knew that they had a part time program as well so i was eyeing that it was not out of blue uh, but i jo- i mean we came here and then i joined my job like in two weeks and that was continuing for a month or so i think it was february or march and then i started um, looking up melbourne business school's website and i knew that they had an intake in april um, but i no way thought that i was eligible to apply or i could apply and get into it and surprisingly i applied for the april intake and i got in mind you it it was uh, it was a new country we had not settled in my husband had not found a job yet so he was going through all the turbulence i had to manage him as well uh, manage my new job which was also a little tricky and new to me like get used to the country make some friends build some network none of this was in place um that's and mba is a huge commitment huge financial commitment huge um time wise to it is a huge commitment i was not ready for um the april intake so i pushed it i think for the july one and then um i decided to go in for july i mean i could have um i could have waited till we settled we bought a house he found a job everything and uh, get settled financially as well but uh, we together decided that time was a priority time was the biggest resource and we did not waste want to waste that so i wanted to do my mba so you got an admission everything else will fall in place and i'm so glad that i took that choice then and yeah yeah, yeah I, i'm almost I, on the I way of finishing remember. it i still remember we were confused on how to pay the first fees you know we didn't have the money to pay the first fees and we ended up taking a very expensive credit card so that uh, we can pay the first installment but then uh, things worked out and um i'd lo- i'd also like to touch upon how you got the second job i mean i remember you did an interview but you didn't get through because it was for a lead role yeah and after a month or so the same people came uh, okay you can you yeah, can probably share uh, yeah. that yeah <laughs> uh, don't hijack my interview yeah. so <laughs> um so yeah uh, so as i said the contract role was a little fickle um as in it was going through a lot of turbulence and they were changing contractors so i did not uh, one thing he had not found job yet so it was like 5 months into my um into my job and he had not found a job yet and i was a breadwinner i was so proud of it but um i also wanted that financial stability i did not like the thought that i could lose my job um turned out that it was it was in that fickle but i did not like the thought that i could lose my job and what would we would we do how do we pay the fees and my mba was on the side um 
so i wanted a permanent job even if that meant taking a pay cut i was happy to go for a permanent job uh, i applied for this role um um yeah i think it was through linkedin mind you we were still not doing the networking part it was we were not there yet so everything was through linkedin i applied this was for a lead role and um yeah i i got an interview call i went for the interview and everything was good i think i did um, a one round of coding and second round was some behavioral some test and third um third was in person um yeah so the interview went well and my feedback was that yeah they like everything about me but i did not have enough experience to be in that role it, it was a senior role overlook i mean yeah you would have a lot of people under you so uh, yeah i was not ready for that even if they offered it so um that was it and i wasn't dejected but yeah i would have liked that job um i came home continued on my old job and um and then i think after a month i got a call from the same person saying hey have have you found a job yet i knew you were looking a month back i said no i'm still continuing on the same job oh we might have an opportunity for a senior role like not the lead role but um something under that which would be perfect for you um uh, so the feedback from your interview was good so we would like to offer that to you and i was i, I was so glad um so I think that that instance taught me that um even if you're rejected for a role that doesn't mean the door is closed like continue that conversation with the recruiter um continue the relationship and um end it in a good note end it in a good note so that um and remi- um I did not do this specifically for me but still um remind them of you probably in a month if you're still available who knows somebody might have resigned and they might have an opportunity for me which is what happened to me so i took the job and yeah i'm still continuing there i'm really happy yeah well you found two jobs in 6 months and i was still job searching i mean that's a parallel story that's going on <laughs> yeah. uh, let's go on and uh, just just a brief note on how your mba has been over here it's it's a completely different experience and uh, uh, you are about to hopefully you'll graduate end of this year yeah. if everything goes well yeah. uh, with the covid pandemic situation on so how how has that experience been for you um, wonderful but um again i dived in before i was yeah i dived into many things before we were even standing still on solid ground um i i don't regret that but it was a lot of things to, it, it is overwhelming at times it was a lot of things to take in um education here as in any other foreign country um is a little different to what we used to in india it is a lot of responsibility on your side than um than on the side of your lecturers of or your um your um university um we have to pick and choose we have to go see opportunities um and networking is very important this part i might have missed out a bit because um i was juggling a lot of things it it kind of got overwhelming at times where i did not fully utilize the networking um, opportunities in your in my university but it's something that i'm making up for now um but yeah it it, it is really uh it is a really different environment and um melbourne business school is one of the best arguably the best uh, business school in australia and it's um it opens up a lot of opportunities to you in terms of alumni and um networking sessions and things like that uh, it's been really fulfilling fulfilling but it has been a lot it it takes a it takes uh, a lot of commitment from your side so i'm working full time 9 to 5 a bit beyond 5 uh, sometimes and my classes are from 6 to 9:30 so i used to leave home like by 8 8:30 for my work and then get back home by 11 o'clock in the night and then continue the same circle day in and out so um i i wanted to finish my mba in 2 years so there are people who take it really slow because it's a part time mba but i was doing two subjects per semester that meant two times a week to the uni um in the night and also other meetings and everything that entailed so um it it is a lot of commitment um but i'm so glad that i did um it, it was it is a wonderful experience yeah um yeah thank you for sharing that story um any advice for migrants i mean i kind of redirect a lot of people to you and you come to my meetups and uh, 
um, talk to a lot of people as well so you probably have seen a lot of mistakes that people do and uh, some some advice that uh, you'd like to give so what would your advice to uh, migrants out there be yeah um i wouldn't call it mistakes it's everyone's journey you have to figure it out for yourself uh, so what went well for me did not go well for vinesh but we were doing everything everything the same so it's um it's not a mistake it it depends on a lot of external factors as well but there are certain things that's in your control um for one try to uh, like one is try to build um, a relationship with the person that you come um, like beat a recruiter beat your interviewer um beat any um, anybody that you come across in the networking meetings that vinesh does or just um to not make everything very transactional but try to try to go with a contribution mindset like provide something for the other person so that they they um recall you with a positive feeling uh, so that's one thing and um another which um i share with a lot of people that i come across especially women is um a job search is a struggle so when uh, vinesh was job searching it took a toll on our relationship as well so i hope you don't um, yeah uh, he's, he 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 is uh, yeah he's very open that's one thing i like about him so uh, yeah it took a toll on him as in he was not going out he was not networking he he did not realize that there were a lot of other people in same condition as him that that connection would have helped um him with his job search with his um mental well being if i would say yeah so do that go out um you are not alone in this journey there's a lot of people who are in the same situation so connecting to them would make your journey better and reach you in um like many ways and for if your partner is job searching it takes a toll on you as well the financial instability um um you you're working you in my case i was also studying i was also handling his emotions for him so i was trying to cheer him up for interviews and like there's only so much you can do because it's his journey but still you want to control it as much as um you can so um, yeah so just push your partner to get out of the house don't sit there sulking or playing video games as he used to um but, uh, yeah introduce them to other networks or if you know somebody else who's job searching and who would like companies to go for these things so yeah push i did not push him because i did not know the was a the were even news like this but yeah that's something you can do push them in a nice way <laughs> I, i know i absolutely know i was a pain and i think i'm getting a design on my shirt i mean this is a new setup and melbourne weather being melbourne weather the sun just decided to come up and i i did not anticipate that but uh, it looks nice on me but uh um uh, thanks for sharing that story uh it's it's good to have a different perspective of my story i know people are bored of listening to my story so getting things from uh, her side was a bit more helpful um let us know how this went this is my first time interviewing a person at my home in front of this setup uh and i think this is the first time uh, you are speaking in a in a live or in, a, in any sort of video so any feedback from you would be valuable for us unlike our, my previous session so uh, absolutely uh, please do leave some comments and please to subscribe my, to my channel as well anything else you'd like to share or how how would people uh, how can people connect to you uh you can connect to me on linkedin so um i think anita.karimbala@gmail.com that's my email id um and yeah it's been wonderful for a change sitting and answering your questions patiently <laughs> which uh, yeah i've never done probably and yeah it was it was wonderful and i hope i added some value to you um through this talk and yeah connect to me i would love to talk to you so please do leave a comment if you have any questions send uh, me a message uh, i can get it to her as well so send me a message or leave a comment or subscribe and leave a comment on youtube as well which i'll be notified immediately uh, and um I, i'm i'll be happy to help so um this is the beginning of week 5 uh, an interesting start um i'll i'll come back again on wednesday this time i don't have episodes for the next two days but wednesday 8:30 am usual time we'll uh, have more stories and uh, more uh, interesting things coming up next week so i'll see you all next time bye 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 bye